portfolio manager for Stanlib's Balanced Fund for a look at their decision to reduce their equity exposure. And I think what we've sat down and we've spent time in our asset allocation meetings with our strategists and with our economists, and we've really taken the view that you know South African equities look expensive. We've had phenomenal growth out of the market. If you look last year, we had 20% growth out of equities, a very, very, very big number, and we don't think we're going to see the same number. So don't this be year. greedy. Don't be greedy. Accept that you've made money out of it. Step back from the situation and start being a bit more cautious on South African equities. So what we've actually done is we've downweighted our South African equities in our portfolio. So we've got an equity weighting in South Africa of around 40% at the moment, and we've been quite focused. What's that come down from? It's come all the way down from a probably around 50 percent so we've probably taken about 10 percent off the table in in south african equities um, what have we been selling we've been very very quick on selling the consumer related shares in south africa i think the consumer is under pressure at the moment you just got to look what's happened with abel if you've got to look at some of the commentary coming out of jd group ellerine's been very very difficult so we're moving away from the consumer we're sort of focusing basically on global consumer stocks so we've been buying lots of sa breweries in the portfolio Lots of Richmond on the luxury goods side in the portfolio. Um, we've also got commodities in the portfolio like BHP Billiton. So we sort of really are slanting to, uh, away from the interest sensitive stocks to the Rand Hedge Let's stocks. Let's talk about this resource play yes. because this is a big one for you. Besides yeah, very much BHP so. Billiton, Sassel yeah. is also a big part of your portfolio. Correct, correct. You believe that the time is right for an investment into resources? Well, what we're seeing at the moment is that valuations are looking very, very cheap. So we've had a tough time in the resources, valuations have pulled back. We're seeing that global growth is starting to improve. So if you look into Europe, then in fact, they'll probably show positive GDP growth this year. And we think for commodities like platinum, it's actually going to be very, very positive. So we've been buying Impala Platinum in the portfolio for a recovery in earnings and also for the fact that the commodity price will probably be firm to marginally increasing in the future. Have you been buying Anglo-American as the other big div diversified if you favor BHP? No, at the moment, we're probably quite different from the competitors. We've got zero Anglo-American in the portfolio. Our view is that BHP Billiton is a better run business we think that there are better dividends coming out of the, the business than we're going to get out of Anglo-American. Big issue with Anglo-American is how do you unlock value when you don't own 100% of all your assets? So Kumba Iron Ore, Anglo-Platinum, they are majority shareholders, but they're still minorities, and it makes it very difficult to, to come to a value unlock. NASPAS, also a significant holding in this portfolio. How much more upside is there to NASPAS? It's a massive debate, that one. We've been very, very nervous on NASPAS for a long time, um, and we certainly think you know the valuations continue to rise. We do a lot more work on it at, 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 at the moment, but somewhere along the line, we're actually going to make a call where we're going to go down to zero percent. So in, this in gets portfolio. debated at it's getting, every day. At the every day, it's getting debated. Um, if you look at the sell side of the market at the moment, they're continually increasing their, their target prices for Naspers, and this it's basically becoming a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy at, at the moment. The problem when you're managing balanced portfolios, specifically with equity exposure, is that Naspers is such a large part of your benchmark now that in terms of portfolio construction and risk mitigation, you've got to own some of the, the share in your portfolio. That probably also holds true for a stock like MTN. Very, very much so. Very much so. MTN we do have in the portfolio. It's around 11% of the equity in the portfolio. We think that MTN really gives you a nice diversified business model across the globe. You're getting cash flows out of Nigeria. You're getting cash out of the Middle East and the rest of Africa. We think the valuation looks very, very compelling. Um, and in fact, they came out with a very positive trading update yesterday where they said that earnings are going to be up very, very nicely. So when results come out in March, I think the market's going to be positively surprised by that. So you're not debating at this point whether you should be jumping out of MTN. You think there's still some room there yeah, to... Yeah, we're to very buy. comfortable with MTN. It's trading around 200 Rand at the moment. We, we see upside to that sort of price at, at the moment, so we're very comfortable to own it in the, in the, in the portfolio. You've stressed the, the Rand hedge component yes. to your portfolio. You're obviously debating on a daily basis where this rand is going and how low it can go, etc., etc. What are the thoughts? Can you share with us at Stanlip? I know that yeah. trying to peg a level is almost impossible at this stage given the volatility. Yeah, yeah. But what is the thinking around? Well, I think the thinking at the moment, as you know, is generated by Kevin Ling's our economists. So what is Kevin's view on the RAND at the moment? If you look at it very, very theoretically, we think that the, the, the sort of fair value of the RAND is probably around 950 to 10 RAND. So that's theoretically would be. But the problem we've got at the moment is that the, 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 the economy is under pressure. We've got more imports than exports in the country, coming into the country. We've got current account deficits. And what is happening is the RAND has been used to incorrect all these balances in the, in the greater economy. So we think that, you know, 
for a while that the rand could remain quite weak until the imports slow down, the consumer uh, finds his feet again, and we start seeing some improvement in the GDP growth. So our sort of forecast is around 10 rand 50, 10 rand 75 for the rand by year end. But we have to acknowledge, you know, when you're forecasting the currency, you can get it horribly wrong. It's incredibly volatile, and if sentiment moves against you, it, it certainly could move a lot weaker before it strengthens. Yesterday, CPI ticking up to 5.8%. The South African Reserve Bank Governor Jill Marcus has expressed her concern over the heightened inflation outlook. Interest rates are going to trickle up from here, it appears. That's the general sentiment. How aggressively they're going to move, nobody really knows. But the trend is, is definitely for uh, higher interest rates. You still favor interest rate sensitive stocks like the banks. You've got exposure to ABSA and First Rand. Is it an area that you're watching closely? We are watching it very closely. In fact, we're having big debates on the, on the banking sector at the moment. So. As a house at Stanlib, we're not looking for a very, very aggressive interest rate uh, increasing cycle. We are saying 2% over the full cycle. We've had 50 basis points already this year, probably another 50 basis points this year, and another percent into next year. So 2% in totality. We don't think that is going to damage the, the, the bad debts too dramatically in the banking sector. So we're not looking for a blowout in bad debts. We think it'll be a very, very comfortable sort of under control cycle, and we're pretty comfortable with that. But it is a big debate we are having. Why specifically have you chosen ABSA and First Rand? over Standard and Nedbank? Um, the reason why we, we went into ABSA uh, is that we see ABSA as a turnaround situation. What are management doing? They're fixing the retail business, which is the majority of, of, of the business. So they're trying to get their clients back, which they've lost over the last 18 months. They reworking. We working. should really be talking about Barclays Africa. Barclays Africa. It is Barclays Africa, correct. Uh, but they've in our mind, it's an easy fix. They've got to fix the South African business, and then they're starting to do a lot of work into Africa, and that should start adding something to the bottom line over the next couple of years. So those are the two drivers we, we think are quite easy to, to work in, in, in the portfolio. First round, the reason why we went for it, it's got the best return on equity at the moment. It's around 22%. We think it's going to sit around 20 to 22% over the next couple of years. Uh, they've done incredibly well in gaining clients. They've got an investment bank, which is doing exceptionally well at the moment, um, and they're sitting on some surplus capitals as well. And the, the question is what they do with that surplus capital. Do they make acquisitions into Africa or do they give the capital back to shareholders? You've also made a comment that you are relatively conservatively positioned at the moment. Yes. Just come back to the other asset classes and your exposure on that front. Yes, very, very much so. Uh, we are basically sitting at full weighting in offshore. So our offshore at the moment is around 28-29%. Uh, the majority of that is in global equities. We have about 2.5% in Africa at, at the moment, just for a bit of um, zing in the portfolio. Uh, in terms of bonds, we've got about 12% in South African bonds at the moment. We're not that particularly keen on bonds. We think probably when bond yields get up to 9%, we would be a bit more aggressive in our positioning in bonds. And our sort of balancing position at the moment is uh, cash. But we don't sit on pure bank cash at the moment. We're sitting in an income fund product, which is giving you a return of around 7% versus cash of 5%. Very, very important also just to highlight is that we've got zero property in the portfolio at the moment. Until we know where bond yields settle down and the bond market settles down, we don't think that property is an appropriate asset class to be in. The tide having turned against emerging markets, yes. has that also got something to do with how you've positioned yourselves and, and taken 10% off the table when it comes to South African equities? Uh, it, definitely. I mean, over the last couple of years, the South African market has been driven by foreign buying. So we've had lots of liquidity in the system. The cash has had to look for a home to find a return. A lot of it has come into South Africa, specifically into consumer-related stocks. So the, the foreigners have been big buyers of Willys, Mr. Price, and other companies like that. Now all of a sudden, yields are starting to, to, to normalize in, in the developed economies, and people are starting to take their money back to, to their own countries. And this is certainly having a knock-on effect onto, onto, onto the South African market. And also, on top of that, it, it has an impact onto the, the, the economics of the, the economy, with your balance of payments goes out of kilter. So uh, there are a whole lot of issues at the moment which have to rectify and, and stabilize. What is it going to take to get you very positive about South Africa Incorporated again? Very, very simple. GDP growth. We need very, very strong GDP growth to come in over the next two years. We are forecasting GDP growth of probably around 3.3% for next year. That's on the high side, isn't it? It is on the high side. We definitely are more bullish. Uh, we're looking for the consumer to come back next year. We're looking for infrastructure projects That's to roll out in South theme, Africa. The consumer coming back in a ri rising interest rate environment. Do you think that the, the consumer is perhaps not as vulnerable as some think? I, th I think that, you know, the, the, the 
the, the sort of unsecured consumer is probably under pressure, but I think the middle class and the upper class are still doing quite well at the moment. And we think that you know, if we get infrastructure projects starting to roll out in South Africa, you create jobs. If you create jobs, people have money to spend, and that drives the economy. So we're quite positive on that into next year. But you still are downplaying the retail story we, in your portfolio. We are downplaying the retail story at the moment. We just think that the valuations look quite demanding. We want to see the valuations pull back in the, in the, in the market a bit. But there's some superb companies out there to buy. I mean, you want to have willies in your portfolio. ShopRite in, you in your are, portfolio. Are you exposed to both willies we, and ShopRite? We've had them in the portfolios. We did sell them at the end of last year, uh, just purely because we were concerned about the consumer. You're not seeing another buying opportunity in Woolies now that we've seen that pullback? Price earnings ratio still looks a bit high at the moment. Uh, we think there's still going to be a bit more of a derating, uh, but it's certainly one we, we're keeping an eye on at the moment. A superb set of results which came out of the company.